Hello, everyone, and good morning. Welcome to our live feed update for October 15th. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and I'm here today to update you on everything that happened yesterday on the Big Brother 25 live feeds. It was day 74 in the house, and uh, what a day. We had uh, a veto competition and then another veto competition. Um, and things are shifting in the house for this week. And with me to talk through it all is Kirsten. How are you doing, Kirsten? I'm doing great, Taryn. Excited to be here. But honestly, if they can do two veto competitions in like seven-ish hours, then I'm going to have no patience for the super long feed outages on veto days anymore. <laughs> Truly. Uh, and also, I feel like it's probably going to feel like uh, uh seven hours watching it in the uh episode on tuesday yeah it's a lot of competitions this week to watch on big brother yeah um especially the way that they do it but we'll get into it um so let's talk through it all uh of course jag is the invisible hoh he nominated blue and felicia with blue as the target so the only thing now is to get through this veto twist. And we quickly learn in the morning here of day 74 that the veto twist is this. There are two separate veto competitions that everyone in the house will be playing in. So all eight players will play in the first veto competition, and then one person will win that veto. Then the winner of the first veto does not compete in the second veto competition. So seven people will compete in a second veto competition where a separate person will then win a separate second veto. Uh, so yeah, they two said different people will be winning vetoes. They said we'd better make an opportunity for these comp beasts to win more competitions. <laughs> Truly, they were like, okay, invisible HOH, that frees them up to go after big targets, but will give them a physical competition to, to do the even Invisible HOH and then double vetoes in order to make sure that they're definitely safe. Yeah. It's, it's, we've, t we've talked to death how frustrating the competition makeup is. Yeah. Um, so basically what this means is that uh, you have like a one in four chance of winning a veto versus a one in six chance. Your chances are better, uh, especially if you are uh, good at competitions, then, you know, then the odds are going to go up even more. So uh, so that's how it's going to work. And uh, this is, you know, this is good news for Blue because she has two shots at winning this veto. Um, and, uh, you know, bad news for anybody that wants blue out or wants to not be the target this week because blue is the target. Um, so blue's gonna kind of start her day, um, by finally dropping the information that she has been holding on to for a while now, uh, to catch you up here. Uh, last week, Cameron dumped a bunch of information on America, Corey, Blue, Suri, to varying success. Um, America kind of bought into some of it, but was like, it doesn't really matter. Blue didn't buy it at all. Uh, and Suri was like, oh yeah, Matt and Jagger running the show. That makes sense. Um, America then uh, has been trying to work on Blue. Um, and she had a conversation with Blue last week where she said, uh, uh, like, hey, do you really see the path to win with Matt and Jag? They're running this game. We're going to have to take some kind of, we're going to have to make some kind of move on that at some point. Uh, and hey, also, they're coming for you, just so you know. Um, and this was a bit of a, a risky play. We said so at the time that it, it could end up getting uh realistically Corey evicted uh, although from my perspective that's not like the worst thing in the world for america um but she did that uh blue did not end up ratting that out um flash fast forward fast forward to this week and america is in, in spite of knowing that jag is the hoh still dropping those seeds to blue uh saying hey blue uh, I think they're coming for you. You're nominated. What do you think is happening? 
Um, and Blue still does not believe America and is starting to think, should I go ahead and reveal this information that America is saying these things to Matt and Jack? She talked to Sari about it the day before, and Sari said, I think you should wait and be careful because you don't want Matt or Jack to think that you're questioning them. You need to make sure that when you, if you reveal this information, you are doing so in a way that is, I never believed it. I fully, fully trust you guys. Um, and so with all of that in mind, Blue finally does reveal this information to Matt here on day 74. She says, hey, I've been talking to America. She's been asking me if I really think my best path to victory is with you and Jag. She was hinting to me that if uh, that targeting anybody other than you two would be a waste if we won an HOH. Uh, she's saying that you guys are coming for me, so on and so forth. Matt, of course, denies everything. Um, there's even a part where she's like, and you, uh, she said you guys thought I was fake limping. And Matt's like, I didn't even see you limp. So, ha, huh, there it is. Obvious lie. Got him. Yeah, it's, I don't hate the move from America in theory to have been dropping this information considering that blue is on the block and like is just not seeing the forest for the trees oh, in the situation the given that jag is the hoh well, like, last week was a little more understandable yeah i like I, it's not the best but i don't think it's like the worst thing ever except you can't really use logic on a player like blue it doesn't work that way it, i think it would honestly if you wanted to turn uh blue against jay you just have to start like talking s about it you know like you have to you have to really have like an ugly conversation if you want to change blue's opinion on someone not really use logic yeah well and you also like i i, I think sari has the right of this where sari has yes. been like poking is she going to bite very clearly she's not and so mm -hmm. Sari has been working around Blue's ignorance. Uh, like yes. when Blue talks to Sari, she's like, okay, well, if they can be trusted, this is like, or like regardless of whether or not they can be trusted, this is how you should operate. Like, um, and I like Sari, I would assume just biding her time in a spot where there's not, it doesn't matter whether Blue mm -hmm. believes Jagger Matt or not right now. Uh, like it matters to America because America has this thing that she's like, she just gets so frustrated when people don't see the truth. Uh, it's been it's been a thing all season long that like doesn't matter what the timing is. If somebody's telling her something she knows is wrong, she's like, no, you're wrong. What do you mean? This is dumb. Look at it. This is what's happening. You're being targeted. Um, yeah. Sari, though, is like, OK, stupid blue doesn't see this, but that's fine. <laughs> Uh, unless Blue is the HOH, it doesn't matter. So if Blue wins the HOH, I would expect that that's when Sari kind of closes the trap and tries to make her make a move. Um, mm -hmm. But she recognizes that uh, until then, it's just going to get her in trouble if she tries to do anything, which uh, this is exactly what theoretically is happening here with America. Um, Breaking news, Sari is better at strategy than America. Turns out, yeah. New um, information. <laughs> so... Blue's also going to relay this information to Jag. She says they believed Cameron when he was telling all of that information. He convinced America, but never convinced me. Um, and then she goes back to Sari and she's like, and she reports back. She's like, I told them and I, and I was, I made sure that, they, that I said, I believed them so on and so forth. And she's like, good, good, good. And you said that you had trust in them. She's like, yes, good, good, good. You did a good job. Um, and so, uh, so that's all been, that's all been put out there. Will it be enough to save Blue? Probably not at this point. They are still planning to target Blue right now. Maybe it, maybe it over time could change their minds. But uh, more importantly, there's a veto competition coming yes. up. Um, and first and foremost, uh, if Blue wants to survive the week, she's going to have to get one of these vetoes. Yes. Uh, and Jag and Blue talk about how they, they're just hoping for a physical veto. They, they need a physical veto. Uh, it would be so dumb for a veto to be luck related. It has to be physical because those those are the two genres of competition: physical or luck. There's no other skill set used in a competition in Big Brother. Yeah, well, I guess uh, not really these days, but you know, you in theory there should be other <laughs> other types. So we get to the two veto competitions, yes. and uh, in these veto competitions, the first veto competition uh, can is uh, is an endurance competition. Um, uh, we don't get to see on the feeds apparently. Um, 
Yeah, well, why would we get to see a, an endurance competition? <laughs> yeah, that would be wild. Uh, so uh, it's an endurance competition, very physical. It lasts for, uh, I think, around two hours or so, according to them. Um, and uh, it comes down to Jag and Blue in the end. Wow, imagine that. And wouldn't you know, Jag pulls it out. He wins the veto over Blue. And oof, rough for Blue. She came so close. Yeah. Uh, she needs this veto. But Jag made sure she didn't win because he wants her out. Well, yeah. Um, and, th and that should be the thing that's like, alarm bells, alarm bells. Like, why wouldn't he let you win the veto? Yes. Uh, but then we get to the second veto. Seven people competing. Mm -hmm. And this one, they said, was more of a chance one. I think they were they were guessing at, like, how much time a thing was. Yeah, they, they were talking about bets. And at first it was like, mm. oh, my God, was it stay fold? But obviously it wasn't stay fold. Uh, I, I, yeah. S some sort of guesswork. Yes. Um, and apparently Corey came close. But the person who came closer was in fact blue who won the second veto oh you couldn't you stop her twice jag <laughs> it's meant to happen so jag and blue are currently holding vetoes what does this mean for the week well first of all blue is safe regardless of whether her plan works or not uh and with blue taking herself off the block the question is who goes back up now Jag's plan had been to put Suri on the block next to Felicia to send Felicia out if Blue were to win the veto. Uh, however, I said yesterday, surely, with a couple of days at the very least of being able to think this through, he would recognize that the plan, the play is to obviously take out Corey or America. Uh, why bother taking out Felicia? That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now, with the addition of Blue's information that she got from America and has now relayed to Matt and Jag, that process seems even more likely that, uh, that they would consider the option of going ahead and taking the shot at Corey or America. Uh, so that's the big question on uh, everyone's mind right now. Um, but uh, there are some other things. Yes. There were some punishments doled out. Um, Felicia is, uh, is in solitary confinement. Um, everyone's prepping for Felicia's funeral. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it'll be good. That would be good. I will, <laughs> I would love to see it. <laughs> Not that she needs it anymore. No, uh, but, I mean, come on, like just, just think about how electric Dan's funeral was. I think I'd be 10 <laughs> times more excited for Felicia's funeral. Felicia comes out. She's like, and Sari in this game, you're dead to me. <laughs> you know what you did. Uh, Siri also got a punishment, which was a, um, she has to like go into a phone booth to, she's wearing a superhero Super costume. Suit. She is going to get some tasks. She had to like roll across the backyard for one of them. Um, it's, you know, just typical. I'm begging them to stop disrespecting Siri in this way. <laughs> she demands more respect than this. So... Back to the strategy of, yeah. of it all. Um, will Matt and Jag consider taking the shot at Corey or America? Uh, it's, it's the play at this point. It makes sense. Um, but there's one thing holding them back, which is the initial noms were terrible. He should not have nominated Blue. I said this from the start. The obvious noms were Suri and Felicia. Why are you trying to keep Suri off the block to appease Suri, who's the least likely person to win a competition? Why? Because it's Suri and she's that good. Uh, but you shouldn't be doing it. Uh, he's nominated Blue. So now if, if he uses, if he takes the shot at Corey or America, it makes it very clear that Corey or America, they weren't the HOH. Obviously, Suri and Felicia weren't the HOH, but we can't be the HOH. And so it exposes that Jag was targeting Blue prior to her winning the veto. And so that, like, that 
idea is like, okay, well, maybe we do need to just send Felicia out so that we can still blame Corey in America. But that's also a terrible idea because obviously Corey in America will just eventually expose you. Um, and so he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, well, but it's all of his own making, right? Yes. Like, you, how are you supposed to have any sympathy for someone who's like, you know what? This is a great opportunity to take a swing, to make a change, to really move things through. And no one has to know it's me. Nobody has to know it's me. But you know what? Instead, look at that hard place. What if I stand against it and pull this rock right in close and put myself in there, right? Or like, oh, look, a rock in a hard place. Let me swan dive into it and do it to myself. Like, it, it, the, like the, like you talked about it already this weekend. Like, uh, Jeg is a bad player that's been propped up by being good at competitions, and we've seen you know varying amounts of badness in his strategy and game as the the season has gone on. And this is feeling very like week two level Jake gameplay. Like he has fully regressed back to where he was before he started learning how to play the game. Yes. Yeah, so he's trying to figure it out. Uh, and he talks to Matt and Matt suggests, I, I think we should just go after Corey. Um, and Jag's like, yeah, but Blue's going to know that we were targeting her. Uh, and so Matt has an idea, which is, okay, well, what if, Blue uses, because because here's how the veto works. I forgot to explain this. Because Jag won the first veto, he's going to go second in the veto use order because his veto was more valuable. He won it first. He beat more people. Um, his is the better veto. So Blue is going to have to go first and use her veto first. Uh, so what that means is that Blue can use her veto. Somebody could go up on the block and then Jag could then veto the person who went up on the block after Blue uses her veto, mm -hmm. um, it's better to use it second. Uh, so the plan that Matt suggests would be, okay, Blue uses her veto on herself. You put me on the block, then use your veto to veto me off the block uh, to make it seem like, obviously, you wouldn't nominate me just to veto me, right? So like it, it makes it seem like it's not you. And then you put up Corey and we just make it seem like it was America and America was forced to make that nomination. Now, this is theoretically an idea that could work, except for the fact that they're forgetting that uh, Suri or Bowie could still go up. It's like this is not the final four situation where you can force someone to nominate a person they don't want to nominate. There's yeah. still options on the table. It's just... Like, this could have been such an easy week, you know? Like, there was a clear path forward, a clear option to make, and you're protected by anonymity. But yeah, it, instead, it, it's like, you know what? Let's make it more complicated for no reason and also be dumb about it. I just keep going back to, like, how easy this would have been if Suri and... and not that I wanted this, but if Suri and Felicia were on the block uh, and Blue and Jag win these vetoes, uh, it's like, okay, now you can't go after Blue. And instead, you just go after Corey in America. And for Blue, you're like, this was the plan all along. Sorry, I didn't tell you. Uh, but now you have to be like, so the plan was to target you, but <laughs> now we're not. Uh <laughs> yeah, well, and but and that's the thing too, is if it was anyone but Blue, I feel like it would matter more that they have to say this. But I also I don't know. I feel like Jake and Blue have this weird like mind connection and they have this whole season of like like being kind of mean when they're talking about other people in the house and also being on like a relatively even playing field when it comes to the game and strategy. Well, well uh, they're talking through this plan. They get interrupted by Blue. Uh, and then they're up there. They're up in the have not room with Blue for a while. Downstairs, Corey and America are talking. Um, and uh, and Corey's like, you know, this this can work as long as we don't go up. Uh, but it's not an ideal situation, obviously. I don't I don't like that Blue is up there talking to Matt and Jag right now. That's a little concerning. Um, and America's like, well, we're just gonna have to trust Jag. Like, we don't really have another option. Corey's like, you know, I, I would trust Jag a lot more in a world where we hadn't talked to him about uh, talked about him to Blue. <laughs> Uh, and she's like, I didn't talk to Blue about Jag. She's like, you said you did. No, not directly. It's fine. It'll be fine. 
Oh, man. They're such a fun little dynamic duo, though. They really are. Yeah, it's not going to be fine. Um, Jack and Matt finally get to talk some more downstairs in the bathroom. Um, and uh, Jag is like, what if I just put them both up? Both of them? Yeah, yeah. Blue uses it on herself. I put America up. Then I use the veto on Felicia and put Corey up. They just, they need to be next to each other. Uh, just put them right up against each other. Uh, and Matt's like, okay. <laughs> Works for me. Jared doesn't give an F. Blood on his hands. Like, let's do it. Make them campaign against each other. Uh, so what do we tell Sari? Well, we just tell her. We just tell her. We tell her I'm the HOH. We say that we didn't say anything before. She she said she didn't even care to know. So uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Just another thing that Sari did well here. Um, she knew it was Jag instantly. And so gave Jag the out to be like, uh, it's like, I don't even. If you win, don't don't even say anything to anybody. Don't tell me it's fine. Um, and now that he's going to go and tell her, he feels comfortable that she'll be okay with it instead of mm -hmm. feeling like she might be betrayed. Um, and, and so she their quietly, relationship is perfectly on track. Yeah, and she quietly did the work to make sure most everyone knows it's him as well. Yes. <laughs> um, what about Blue, though? We need to also tell Blue in this, in this spot. Uh, well, okay. We just tell Blue that Corey and America got in our heads and we act like what she told us today changed our minds and, and opened our eyes. And it's not that she won the veto. It's that she convinced us and, you know, got, a, got Corey and America out of our heads. I just feel like it's so wild to base your strategy around the fact that someone you are not working with was able to get into your head so effectively that you would target your own alliance. Like how that's not going to foster trust. Is it okay? So it happened once it could happen again. Anyone can get to you if you're going to fall for what Corey and America are saying. Like, Well, the, the trick to this one is that this also, this like blue did the same thing to them with Jared. <laughs> Like yeah, where blue went to them and said, I was planning to backdoor you. <laughs> and it was like, so it's, it's actually kind of like fair game. Uh, well, like, but... What multiverse are we in at this point? Like what's the like, dumbest timeline? Um, and Jack says, you know what? And he, here's the thing. If, if, if blue and America team up and come for us next week, who cares? We just go for it. It'll be, me, you, Bowie, Suri, all competing. I get to compete against Blue in America with like Felicia somewhere in the middle. Who cares? We win. Yeah, just rely on the comps. Who needs to, you know, set themselves up well strategically when they can just comp out? Well, as as it's been famously said, Big Brother's not a social game. So, um. <sighs> yeah, you can actually win Big Brother without having any understanding about why you're good at it. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the plan. Um, and uh, I mean, first and foremost, I think the way that Jag set this up was awful. Um, but like this worst is the worst possible way to do it. He is still. Yeah, it is. It is the worst possible way to do the <laughs> correct move. Yeah. He is doing the correct move, though. He's not, like, targeting Matt or Bowie uh, or Felicia. Like, uh, oh, man. Like, he's not making that mistake. Like, it seemed like he might yesterday. But it would be so beautiful if he backdoored Matt with his anonymous HOH. But let me tell you this. I think the real winner here uh, is, is Suri. This is mm -hmm. the absolute best case scenario for Suri because... Aside from the fact that Jack gets to compete next week, that's that's the only thing that 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 would makes this worse for Sari. But basically, first of all, Sari avoids the block entirely this week when she absolutely sh she should be the default pawn, um, but she's not because she managed to to like weasel her way into the trust of these people yeah, after she was the one playing them for the first fifty days of the game. Because memories are not that long. Like, like, how far ago does it feel 
those first like 44 or however many days, right? It feels like it has been 84 years since that time. Surreal, it's like a different game. I feel like they're on like their third game of Big Brother at this point. <laughs> so now she gets to start over and she can run it for the last third. It's perfect. Yes, yeah, so Surreal's social work helps helps trick Jag into making the wrong nominations, which is blew up on the block right away, which gives Suri the ammunition that she probably will need uh, in future weeks if she needs to turn blue against them. So basically, she's she's gotten blue up on the block uh, or helped to keep herself off the block. Blue's on the block instead. Blue wins the veto. That was best case scenario for Suri because Suri has a much better relationship with blue than Corey or America. And... Uh, and Corey's like the one person in the house who's keeps spreading like she won the traders. She's a legend uh, with Corey gone. It really like opens up the fields to make mm -hmm. more fields. Um, and so yeah, and have that person in the jury talking about what an icon legend backstabber strategist you are. Perfect. Chef's yes. kiss. Um, and so blue is somebody that might take Suri to the final two and lose to her. Uh, now with America in the game, America is somebody that she could go to the final two with, uh, and, and win and maybe even win a couple of comps against. Um, and so, uh, like keeping both blue and America and Felicia and Matt. Now, all of a sudden, the only people you're worried about are like Jag and Bowie. Um, and, uh, and that's looking a lot better. Um, so, uh, so yeah, getting Corey out this week while also putting a fracture in Jag and Blue's relationship that she can later like dig into and use is just best case scenario. Um, well, and I also even feel like this is a great opening for her to use with Matt to have him have less trust in Jag. Like, look at, look at what he did with this power. He turned on Blue. He could turn on you. He could turn on anyone. He's such a wild card. Like, you know what? It sucks. We love Jag, but this might just be the time. It might, it might just be his time to take care of him, you know? Well, also just Jag winning more comps. Like, I think the, the even better argument is just like, Matt, you can't beat him. He's won five comps now. Uh, well, yeah, you you've can't won beat him. And he's unpredictable. <laughs> Get him out. Um. So, uh... So, 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 you know, we'll see. Obviously, it's it's good for Sari. Let me be clear, though. This is still good for Jag. I mean, uh, I said at the start of the week, Jag taking out either Corey or Blue or, again, America, uh, I think is perfectly fine for Jag because at the end of the day, he's right, especially if he does actually get to compete next week. The fact of the matter is, he's probably going to win again. Like, they're, they're just going to... He's just going to keep winning. Him and Matt are just going to keep winning. Uh, and so, you know, like taking out one of the people who even has re a remote chance of beating him is a great play for Jag this week, regardless of the way he went about it. He can trash his social game all he wants. Uh, you know, he just has to keep winning. Uh, and he knows that. Um, and right now, Blue does seem to be uh, in a spot that we'll we'll talk about. but. Um, but it's uh, but you know, this is this is where things are heading. Um, and you know, Corey even said himself yesterday or the day before, uh, it probably would have been smart for Jack to nominate me in America. And so uh, it took him a while to get there, but he eventually got there. Yeah. Uh, you know, he took a winding trail, the road less traveled, but he got there. Yeah, and I I forgot also he also pissed Bowie off this week. I forgot about that part too. Yeah. Yeah, he really, uh, he did a bad job with everybody. Uh, it's not good, uh, the moves that he's been making. So mm. uh, I just pray for a crapshoot HOH and like, I don't know, maybe, maybe like a Felicia HOH. Would Ooh, be a crapshoot nice. HOH would strike fear into the hearts of Matt and Jag. Um, well, it wouldn't be fair, Taryn, to no. have a... A, a competition based on luck it oh. should be physical the this game is for physical players nobody else um so irritating so jag lets bowie know what they're thinking bowie's like that's what i was thinking and so uh bowie's super on board uh he may have pissed her off uh you know the day before 
But uh, but now they're doing now he's doing what she wants. I think this is mostly going to be a blip on the radar here for Bowie. Um, she'll probably still be locked in with Matt and Jag. Um, but it's just again, it was just a, such an unnecessary thing to have happened at all. There shouldn't have even been a chance for this to cause a rift. Um, and you don't usually forget if people make you cry. Uh, so it it leaves an opening for somebody like perhaps Suri. Now Bowie's guard is up against Suri because she's also had experiences with Suri. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's just something that's there. Like it, even even like some somebody like Matt could use this against Jag if he needed to. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, so we'll see. But but Bowie's on board. Uh, and the plan is that we're they're going to pretend Bowie doesn't know about Jag being the HOH. They're going to use this opportunity to help separate her from them in the eyes of the rest of the house. Yeah, why why not do that? Um, okay, would you say? Over or under five unforced errors from Jag this week? Um, nominations. Uh, the thing with Bowie. Telling America and Corey. Um, just not nominating Suri at all. Um, eh, winning the veto, maybe. I, he didn't really need the veto. I mean, he, Blue would have won it, but then Blue ends up winning it anyway. Uh, it yeah. wouldn't, and that wouldn't have even mattered if he had made the right nominations in the first place. So I think, uh, nominating or winning the veto probably is another one, uh, if, if you really want to start stacking them. Um, yeah. but you know, it's all covered over by the fact that he can compete next week and we'll probably win. We need to stop speaking that into existence. I'm going to, I'm going to like light a candle for a crapshoot HOH. Um, so, uh, Jag is going to go and talk to Suri, and he lets her know that he won the HOH. And uh, Suri Fields, <laughs> who all week long has been like, this motherfucker obviously won <laughs> the HOH, and he's yeah. not telling me, and I know what he's up to, and she's been trying to turn people against him. He tells her he won the HOH, and she's like, you did. Oh, Jack, I'm so proud of you. I know your mom must be feeling the same way. Uh, and she's crying to him. She would be so, so proud of you. I'm so happy. Uh, it's, it's just like bow down to this woman. Truly, Suri Fields deserves not just an Emmy, not just an Oscar, but also a Grammy and a Tony. Give her the full egot. When Jag relays this conversation to uh, to Matt, he he does so with this like proud smile. Like, yeah, she was like really proud of me. Uh, she didn't care at all. She was just so happy. Um, <laughs> like he's so he's like, ah, yeah, like I it was such a good conversation by me. Um <laughs> <sighs> okay, you know what? As a Suri stan, I can't even like be annoyed anymore. I'm just like I'm just so happy that she is getting what she needs. Mother is mothering. <laughs> yes, uh, he says Matt is the only other person that knows, and I swore I, he swore that he wouldn't tell anyone else. So don't blame him for not telling you. So, of course not. Of course not. Uh, she says, "Listen, Jack, I, I rock with you heavy, so I'm I'm really <laughs> flattered." that you're trusting me with this information and it's not going anywhere. I'm so happy that it's you. Um, and she's like, man, Felicia is going to be coming out of, coming out of that uh, solitary tomorrow, asking you to take her off the block. Uh, and he goes, well, about that, you're not going to have to hold this secret for long because just about everyone knows already. I, or I mean, well, is about <laughs> to know. And I'm not kidding. He did do that uh, because I'm about to put Corey in America up. <laughs> he says no blue was way. my target but blue talked to me earlier today told me all this stuff about america and Corey, and uh and so now i i feel like you know america and Corey gotta go and, and it's just again it's so obvious like the way he's saying this and the way he'll talk to blue about it too is like he's like so everyone's about to find out anyway that's not why i'm telling you now but uh <laughs> It will become obvious that 
it was me. I didn't wait until the absolute last second to tell you. It's yeah. not it's not like that. But yeah, and it's for sure because you convinced me to change my decision. Uh mm. it's not because my options are quickly running out. Yeah. He goes on to talk about all the ways that him and Matt have carried Corey in America. Uh, and he says, and he says this straight up, which is what I've been saying. He says, honestly, f- the invisibility. The only thing that's important about this HOH is that I get to play in the next one. You know, maybe he is trying to make his target so big that it becomes invisible. Just like I, I it's it baffles my mind that if this is tr- I like I still have trouble believing that it's true and that he's not just misinterpreting because it's just like everyone knows it's him and you're just going to let him play in the next HOH under the guise of like, well, he has to because people might know it's him if he doesn't <laughs> when you also have a solution that you've implemented in past seasons. To deal with this exact scenario where you force Claire to throw the HOH. What do you mean? Which to me means it's an HOH that they won't be able to throw a crapshoot. Listen, at the very, at the very least, with an invisible HOH, if this is how they want to do this, they Mm -hmm. should tell him, you get to compete next week as long as nobody finds out it's you. If anybody I, finds out, you don't get to compete. I think if anyone finds out it's you, you should be up on the block on Thursday night. Well, well that's why I said at the very least. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I just don't understand what we're doing here. I I feel like they're they're just so leaning into the twist, which, I mean, it's fine. It's Big Brother. We know there's going to be twists. Uh, it would be pretty silly of us to think that they're just going to stop doing that. But at the very least... They could have, you know, like one person on the panel that's like, hey, let's think about the implications of the twist as it is outlined. What will this do when there's a majority alliance? What will this do to the underdogs? Is this going to make people play scared? Is this going to make people like destroy the momentum of the season? Like, can can we just have like one person, like one hater? on the panel to be like, listen, this won't work and here's why. There's many, many, many people on Twitter qualified to do it. I think that it would be a conflict of interest if you were hired, Taryn, to be completely honest, but uh, there's so many people that could serve that role. A conflict of interest in what way? Well, I mean, I don't know. If you're going to cover the show and then you're going to be employed by the show, you're like kind of double dipping a little Uh, bit there. It would be conflict of interest to then podcast about it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. So, um, like, if I mean, if you wanted to give up podcasting, I wouldn't endorse it. But if you were going to go make the show better for us all, then it's like, okay, I'll accept that. But it would be hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, Suri is going to go to Matt, and they celebrate. And Matt's like, I hope you understand why I didn't say anything. And she's, of course. Uh, Matt, you knew I was safe. Don't even explain that to me. Uh, and he's like, okay. I won't. Um, and he explains everything to her. Um, and uh, and they talk through the whole, the, all the same stuff. Uh, she says, "Oh, Matt, I was so scared for you this week. Uh, I, I'm so happy now. I've I've never been scared for you in this game until this week. But now, oh, such a, a breath of relief." She, listen, she's good. Okay, she she's got it. Let her cook. Um, and then, of course, Jag's going to talk to Blue. And uh, Jag says, so here's the thing. I'm the invisible HOH. And she goes, mm, put Corey's ass out. You're not going to. And I'm putting up Corey in America. Ah! She gets up and hugs him. No, slay. He says, The conversation you had with me earlier today was the pivotal thing. Up until now, they've been saying things about you, and I thought I could trust them. Uh, And you know what? I apologize for believing them. But now I'm putting their asses on the block. Uh, And she's like, thank you. That's what I've been trying to say for so long. And she just dumps the entire her entire like uh, life history over the last two weeks uh, and and tells him everything. Um, 
Although she does minimize her uh, conversations with Sari. In fact, she says, I talked to Felicia about it uh, at one point, but she does not talk about how she talked to Sari about it. Um, they talk about, and then they just go on. They just like, she's happy. They celebrate. She forgives him for, uh, for you know, doing it because look, now he's putting up Tori in America um, and they start, you know, just going in like, uh, oh yeah, America. America would have been gone so early in this game if not for us. We we fought to keep America. Uh, like I I don't even know what they're referring to because they definitely didn't. I <laughs> yeah no, genuinely I do not know what they mean. And like you can just like nominate someone. You can just target someone. You don't have to like start pre villainizing that person. Like it's actually better to wait to villainize people until after you voted them out, you know? Like, d don't have an opportunity for people to to learn the truth while they're still there. I don't know. I, j I just think it's really ugly the way they're talking about America. Like, everyone talking about how she's, oh, she's so dumb. Like, Corey's a genius. America does, does nothing. Mm, wasn't America the one who came second in the extremely physical HOH this week? Seems a little more threatening than Corey, who hasn't been close other than during that double. Yeah, and and so like I I do want to make this point. So obviously, like this is this is it for Corey and America. Assuming this goes through, um, Corey and America on the block together, no more vetoes. Um, I actually like in thinking about it, I think that Jag and Matt should want America out over Corey, um, because mm -hmm. there really isn't that much of a difference between the two in competitions. Uh, Corey has won one where America hasn't, but America has outperformed Corey plenty of times in competitions. Uh, she's just as capable of winning one as he is. More capable physically, because she's outperformed him in physical competitions, and pretty much just as capable uh, with mental competitions. Um, so between the two of them for competitions, America's just as dangerous, but more importantly, she's more dangerous in the sense that like nobody's going to want to target America after corey has gone. Uh, she can link back up with Blue and Felicia and Suri, um, and that could be dangerous, whereas Corey in the game still has to be dealt with. Nobody wants to go to the end with Corey. If you take out America, then you know it's harder for Blue and Suri and Felicia to deal with Matt and Jag first when Corey's still around. And even if they do, they still have to deal with Corey. It's much more annoying. Um, the problem is, they can't really do anything about it because Blue, Suri, and Felicia control the votes this week. Uh, so even if they come to this conclusion, it won't matter uh, unless they're able to convince Blue to come along with them. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think underestimating America in competitions is uh, is is not what they should do. Given yeah. I do think she's just as capable of. Discord. Well, and even just underestimating America in general, like if you go back to how she taught was talking to Blue about how it's obvious, look at what they're doing, like you don't want to look dumb. Okay, so that means that she is kind of having a sense here. I, I think that they really think Corey is running the show for both of them, but it really they are a really collaborative team, actually. So uh, I I think that underestimating America is a huge mistake. Yeah, and because... I also just want to clarify as well. I'm not saying don't like bond by talking shit about people. I'm saying be a little bit more careful and wait till they're gone before you really start going heavy on it. Well, I will say, I think in this instance, it's like, you know, he just screwed Blue over hard. And so mm -hmm. like indulging in this, not to say that like Jag isn't a shit talker too, because he is. Um, but like indulging in this with Blue and bonding in this moment is, is pretty important for Jag if he wants to try and win Blue back over having just betrayed her. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do understand it in that sense. But my, my thing is like, at least be logical about it. Like, you know, like don't don't make stuff up about how you are the savior. Yeah. He literally says, I've been Corey's savior uh, in the game. And to some degree, he has, like when he saved him from Cameron. Um, yeah. But uh, but he also talks like that mother is so ungrateful. He thinks that Cam would have taken him off the block when Jared was HOH. Yeah, Cam was planning to do that, dude. What do you mean? He's like, that's like the most ridiculous thing in the world. Uh, yeah, but you can't expect Jag's points to be grounded in reality. Come on. Uh, and he says, especially with these mental comps coming up, we need to get rid of this Jimmy Neutron mind ass uh, before he can start winning them. Not Jimmy Neutron. 
<laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I in that that point, that one is fair. Uh, because that's what Corey has been saying. Yeah, Corey did really shoot himself in the foot with uh, all that commentary about the these mental compass at the end that he can win. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. So that's so that's where things are being left off here. Uh. It is. Um. You know, things are moving in this direction. Corey and America looking like both of them will end up going on the block. Uh, seems unlikely that Corey will be able to survive, um, given that Felicia Suri and Blue control the votes. Um, however, it's not impossible, again, that Matt and Jag realize what I thought of yesterday, which is that it might actually be better, if they're, especially if they're worried about America and Blue teaming up, uh, or even just America and, and Felicia or whoever teaming up, that like maybe it makes sense for them to take out America. The problem is, the reason why they would want America out is the reason why they can't get America out uh, unless they are able to get Blue on board. Um, and, you know, maybe Suri and Blue don't feel like it's worth fighting that fight just for America uh, if it's if it means pissing off Jag and, and Matt. So it's not completely impossible, but it seems fairly unlikely at this point that Corey would stay. Um, and uh, And so there it is. We head into next week with maybe jag being able to compete it still seems so ridiculous to me that that would be true but he very firmly believes it so i this i mean this show is ridiculous so i sh sure i guess that's what they're doing yeah uh and that's uh that's the day quite an exciting day uh big day double vetoes uh big big shift in plans uh, double blindside as well, currently. Um, yes. That Corey and America do not know that it's coming. I don't know if they will end up finding out, but, uh, I, you know, uh, it's not that often you get a double blindside. Yeah, what a beautiful, what a beautiful thing. Hopefully we get the feeds back relatively quickly after the uh, renom slash veto ceremony and can really see the fallout. Yeah, and so... The fallout is interesting too because both Corey and America, uh, well, a, gonna we're gonna be campaigning against each other, which is yes. might be fun. Um, B might not be making out as much, which will be even more fun. Uh, C, more importantly, C, uh, will probably be doing the cam thing as well, where they're gonna be dumping all of the information they have on Matt and Jag, which is exactly what Suri probably needs to start turning blue against Matt and Jag. Like, hey, I know you forgave them right away, but. They were planning to target you. They've been doing all this stuff behind your back. Are you sure yeah. you want to trust them? And especially if if Corey and America are the ones doing most of the pushing, like like with Cam last week, Sari gets to come in and just kind of like confirm the stuff for a second time. Maybe that will be enough for her to get Blue on board. Uh, and then none of it will matter because Matter Jag will make you in. Boom. I th but I also think uh, you need to be more on board with this crapshoot theory. We're going to speak it into existence. We're going to make it happen with the power of our minds, our Jimmy Neutron brains. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll do our best. We'll try to manifest. Yeah. So um, so basically today should just be a holding pattern unless Corey and America figure out what's happening. Um, yeah, which is certainly possible. Certainly possible. Uh, you know, I don't think like Blue has no incentive to say anything. Suri's obviously not going to say anything. Um, when Felicia comes out and they tell her, maybe then something gets leaked. But uh, no, I feel like Suri is going to like immediately grab her and be like, "Listen, here's what's going on." Uh, Jag is not the best liar, so um, no. it might become obvious over the course of the day. But but Corey's also like Corey and America both have never been like the most uh, observant uh, players. Uh, also, so like uh, unobservant versus obvious, uh, who wins? I'm not sure. Um, but uh, but that's I guess the story of the day will be: Will America and Corey figure this out? Will they be told? Uh, if so, there might be some campaigning, some drama. Uh, if not, we're just in a holding pattern waiting until tomorrow when the ceremony happens and uh, and they go up on the block. Yes. So that's Amazing. that's that's what we got. Kirsten, anything else you wanted to bring up? 
Um, I just want to say I I don't know if I've ever connected more to a Big Brother contestant than uh, Corey eating the world's largest bowl of pasta yesterday. It's his thing. Like, that's me. That's me. You you're a, a 21 year old college boy. I <laughs> no, ju just about eating a giant bowl of pasta. <laughs> uh well um you know it's it might be his last <laughs> big bowl of pasta. oh no oh no he'll have he'll have plenty of pasta in the big brother out. house in the big brother yes house. um so uh so there it is that was uh that was yesterday thank you all so much for joining us of course i'll be back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m eastern to update you on everything that happens today on the big brother 25 live feeds uh I'll also be on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong, uh, playing some Goose Goose Duck today and also watching tonight's episode live with all of you uh, where we will uh, watch uh, BB Comics. Yay. And not much else. <laughs> um, I wonder how much they'll give away about like how many people know that Jag is the Invisible HOH. -H. I'm hoping that they'll have like a counter on the bottom of the screen. Like, like lean into the bit. Like how many people know? <clears throat> One. Two, it, they don't three, love like to admit that their twists flopped. Yeah, but they don't mind admitting when their players flop, you know? So it, I, it, it's also, not like, impossible. Especially if they're going to let him play in the next HOH. It makes no sense if, like, they, if they clearly show that everyone knows. It makes no sense that they let him play in the next HOH. Like, what is the explanation? Because... Nobody well, should know. Rule, Taryn. It was it was already in place, so, so their hands are tied. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also like if knowing you can compete gives you more incentive to tell people. Uh, because you're like, yeah, I'm doing this now, and I can also compete next week. So, watch out. Don't talk about me. Um. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we'll see. But uh, I'll be live tonight watching it. We'll be live uh, recapping it after it happens. Um, and then we'll we'll keep it moving. We have the uh, Stockwatch Roundtable tomorrow night as well. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, we also talked to Zach, uh, Corey's brother, yesterday, uh, who luckily uh, reached a point where he was like, look, Corey made jury. <laughs> We're good. Yes. So. That was a great podcast, too. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Zach was great. Uh, very fun to talk to. Um, so you can check that out as well. Um, and uh, Kirsten, what do you got going on? Yes. Yeah, so mess magnets every week. Uh, Sasha's out this week, but Tori from Ready to Be Petty is going to join me. We're going to talk about everything going on in pop culture and just the general zeitgeist as well uh, for the, the Tuca and Birdie fans. We're back. Bojack Horsepod is finally going to do season three of Tuca and Birdie starting this week. So Get ready, check that out, and I will be on Twitch today playing Goose Goose Duck, twitch.tv slash Kirsten Said What. You can follow me everywhere at Kirsten Said What. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here today, and I will see all of you.